we always learn about uh, American founding fathers who had slaves. You know, this was a practice that was carried over from centuries, but we never really learn about the Islamic slave trade, about the slave trade that occurred in Africa and, and still occurs in portions of the world. Yeah. Well, you've hit two really important things there. Number one is we're tearing out all these statues because they're associated with slavery. Uh, wait a minute. This entire relig religion has been doing slavery since 600. So, I mean, does that mean we tear down every mosque? Because I, today they are still active in slavery. The Muslim world is still active in slavery to this day. Right. Right. Right now. I mean, we, that different story, but we can go through that later. So if you're after slavery, well, let's look around. Let's not go after the founding fathers alone. And by the way, while we're at it, I love doing this. We the, All summer long, we have groups of, of college kids come in for two weeks, and we do all this kind of training. And we're into truth. We want you to know truth, the good, the bad, the ugly of America. We want you to know it's actual. doesn't matter what a professor says. You look at an original document. Read the Quran yourself. Right. So... We do this kind of stuff on truth, and what we'll do is we put a picture of the signers of the Declaration up in front of those kids at the start of the two-week session. Say, tell me everybody up there you can name that owns slaves, because we know they're all racist, bigots, and slave owners. Right. Everybody can name Thomas Jefferson, and I have not, in five years of doing this, I have not had anybody name a second slave owner of the signers of the Declaration other than Thomas Jefferson. So, so uh, wait a minute. Time out. Jefferson owns slaves, so that means they're all 56 racist and bigots and slaves. Is that what you're telling me? And they recognize that's a pretty fallacious argument. Right. And what we can do is we can show them that out of the 56 signers of the Declaration, only 14 were pro-slavery. Three out of four started abolition society, spoke against slavery, fought against it, led against it. But we get the exception, not the rule. And that's the way we teach American history today. Right. You want to be fair about history? Say, okay, one-fourth of the founding fathers were pro-slavery. They came primarily out of Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina. Let's go north, whole different ball game. You have blacks elected to office in 1768 in New Hampshire, reelected for 49 years, eight different political positions. You have a number of black heroes in the American Revolution, major paintings done of them that nobody ever sees today because we don't think the blacks had any role in the revolution. Right. So we get this politically correct nonsense going, whether it's on Islam or the founding fathers or slavery. By the way, we don't talk about political correct. Every single statue that's come down has been of a Democrat activist that was a racial <laughs> bigot. Context does matter. And you talk about this one quarter, obviously, pro-slavery, which the rest were not, um, at a time where it was considered really revolutionary to be anti-slavery. This is this idea oh, yeah. that, you know, if you look at slavery, if you look at the timeline, abolished in England long before the United States, but they don't talk about the British Empire. Yeah. The anti-slavery people were the radicals. Yeah, the anti-slavery, I mean, we are yeah. responsible globally even though there still exists slavery today, but in the Western world for single-handedly ending slavery as we know it. A lot of people don't do it. We don't get credit for that. It was a practice carried over. So um, what about when people say, the guy who wanted to remove the monuments there in uh, uh, George Washington Park, they say George Washington owned, slaved, uh, owned yeah. slaves, Franklin, Hamilton, and they, they go through the list, pretty much everyone they saw in J the John Adams special. Man, we are so undereducated today, we love platitudes. We'll elect presidents on single phrases like, you know, change or lean forward or whatever, yeah. uh, make America great. What does that mean? You right. know, I, I don't care. I'm elected to president on that. And so we're into these <laughs> little bitty platitudes that we, we know so little about. And in Virginia, I mentioned that Jefferson was a slave owner in Virginia. And he was, I think, 181 slaves, something of the sort like that. Interesting thing, he was, it was illegal for him to free his own slaves. His own slaves, and he could not do it by Virginia law. And so what happens is, Jefferson is the guy who, who tried to end slavery nationally. He tried first in Virginia. They voted him down. He introduced the national anti-slavery law, lost by one vote. Jefferson said, oh, would to God that one heart would have changed. We could end ended slavery nationally. Came within one vote. Jefferson did that. Jefferson, for nearly 60 years, was a huge leader in the anti-slavery movement, which is why up until and through MLK, black civil rights leaders were praising Jefferson for all he did to try to end slavery. Right. Now today all we say, oh, Jefferson owns slaves, he's a bad guy. Wait a minute, state law wouldn't, the same with George Washington. George Washington had a loophole in state law that says, when you die, you can free your slaves. Got it, he did. And then they closed that loophole by Jefferson. They said, oh, so, got, can't have that, we gotta close that loophole. And, and so Virginia, you'll find most of the Virginia founding fathers were anti-slavery. Matter of fact, George Mason, one of the 55 guys who wrote the Constitution, he didn't sign it for two reasons. Number one, it didn't have a Bill of Rights. So he, he wanted a Bill of Rights. He's called the Father Bill of Rights. Right. Number two, George Mason from Virginia didn't sign the Constitution because it did not abolish slavery. He's a slave owner. You want to end slavery? Free your slaves. No, I'm from Virginia. Can't do that. Right. I want the Constitution to abolish slavery. 
So you got all these guys that actually even some of them owned slaves that didn't want slaves that were huge anti-slavery guys. You'll never get that nuance today. All well, we do is platitudes and sound bites. It would be like taking everyone today who's forced to pay a carbon tax and say they were pro-carbon tax when we're actively fighting against it. Like, no, That's no, this right. is the law. We believe in the rule of That's law. Right. And we believe using the law to try and fight it, to try and change the law, to try and amend the law. A lot of people don't give them credit for the good stuff that they did. If you hate slaves, you don't free them upon death. But uh, <laughs> or we sleep with them. <laughs> or, sleep, or sleep with them. There is some of that, some personal decisions. People were imperfect. But oh, I guess. By, by the way, let, let, let's, let's hit that for just a second because. Okay. We're alluding to Thomas Jefferson here, right? I mean, Jefferson slept with slaves. What you got is, does anybody ever pay attention to the fact that they never used Jefferson's DNA in that DNA test? I mean, they did that in November of 1998, and Joseph Ellis announced that Jefferson slept with the slaves, and the guy who did the, the DNA testing, Eugene Foster, we talked to him, we talked to him, we did the second DNA testing, they never used Jefferson's DNA. He said, I told them that. I told them it doesn't prove well, that. Well, how do they make the claim then? Well, what happened was there were 26 Jefferson males in the area, and they used one of Jefferson's uncles. And since way back then, we believed that it was Thomas Jefferson's younger brother, Randolph, who did that. Yep, got that DNA, got the connection. Well, that's a Jefferson. That means it was Thomas. No, there was 26 Jefferson males living in Monticello. You don't, as a matter of fact, the first child from, from Hemings was a guy named Thomas, and the newspapers of the day, they said they, she named it Thomas because it named it after Thomas Jefferson. They checked the DNA, of, uh, and, and the, this is 1998. The DNA they tested was of Thomas, the first son of Sally Hemings. There was no Jefferson DNA at all in Thomas, nowhere. She had five children. They found some Jefferson DNA in the fourth child, and that's the one that we've always said was, was Jefferson's younger brother, Randolph. Right. That goes back 200 years. But they say, well, Jefferson DNA, it's got to be Thomas. No, the DNA testing showed just the opposite. I smell a new series, CSI Jefferson. Yeah! <laughs> hey, this video is taken as a clip from the full show, daily show at ladderwithcredit.com slash mug club, where it's available exclusively $69 a year. That's less than $6 a month, less than two expensive cups of coffee, or you can feed an African child. But what would you want to do? Just buy coffee or join the mug club. Daily show, ladderwithcredit.com slash mug club. See you there. Don't feed children.